It's the 4th of April, 2021. I'm Dana Durnford. Welcome, everybody. Hope you're doing well on this Easter Sunday. I've got an, actually an amazing show for everybody tonight. <clears throat> Definitely wouldn't expect this particular program. And I like to start off with music because it lights up 19% of your brain that you don't use unless there's music there. How bizarre is that? Let's get into it. Really good show for everybody tonight. Uh, John Kretchen, former Prime Minister. Now, anybody thinks that he's just stupid or anything like that, you're very sadly mistaken. And extraordinarily wealthy and unbelievably connected. Uh, he's the oldest current and past prime or past prime minister still alive 87 years of age and what a story we got for everybody tonight you can call in at 709-589-4406 709-589-4406 just ask for dana i'll be the one picking up the phone <laughs> okay, so this is probably one of the most bizarre shows we've ever done, and it won't disappoint. Let's get at it. First, let me just introduce you to Fukushima in a dozen or so headlines. I apologize for <laughs> extra Dana. France says Japan has lost control. And the French should leave the country, France. Do you know Jean Chrétien has a daughter named France? Uh, which is extraordinarily important, by the way. France says now, so this is an important headline, France. Uh, that, that's a reoccurring theme coming up. Okay, Fukushima nuclear power plant. So John Chrétien in... An investigative reports from CBC <laughs> had claimed that John Kretchen wanted to import the radioactive waste from Japan to Labrador, Newfoundland, and they kept it secret. So it's going to take us a while to get to that because there's you got to lay this, the stage for this whole bizarre story. Deteriorating plant threatens mass extinction extinction around the world. Wrap your mind around that statement how a single nuclear power plant can set off, be the catalyst for an extinction event right around the entire planet. And uh, it's not just one expert, as many of them have. Experts agree many species of wildlife and fisheries are endangered globally, which is worldwide, due to the releases from Fukushima. Now, they say in the ocean, but let's counter that in a minute. Nuclear engineer, I agree, Fukushima can be an extinction event. So this is not just a single source. This comes from different places around the world, from experts. <clears throat> now, the radiation, this is a model of the radioactive fallout. You're going to see coming out of Japan, crossing, that's the Pacific Ocean, this is the Atlantic Ocean, that's America, up there is Canada, up there is Iceland, Greenland, this is Europe. The model stops uh, after so many days, but the radiation plume never stops, right? Eventually it covers everything. Over there is a study from Ottawa, Canada, of the radioactive fallout, um, just blanketing North America, all of Canada, United States, the entire continent, with 220 million atoms. Now, this is just one study of the iodine-129, 
And so you would do mathematical equations to extrapolate plutonium, curium, uranium, amnesium, strontium, etc., etc., etc. Isotopes that are long lived. Miko Kaku, uh, famous uh, physicist in North America, human civilization may destroy itself. Uh, look at Fukushima, the liquefaction of three nuclear reactor cores. A Nobel Prize winner in NHK, the only way to preserve human life is to completely turn away from nuclear power. Think about that statement. So this is a recent story last month, a time of reckoning for social media, but they also recognize nuclear power has the risk of destroying the planet through radioactive fallout. Major U.S. paper, time to quit nuclear power altogether, threatens the very existence of human civilization as we know it. Uh, Tokyo legal expert, once a nuclear accident occurs, everything is over. Zero prospects of ever restoring the fishing grounds. Zero. All will be lost. That's the reality of nuclear energy. Leading director in Japan, nuclear power generation is the only invention that may destroy the futures of humans. And you can't do that without destroying all the other species, all the animals, mammals, and birds, and insects, and bacteria. Japan is going the very best way in the world for destroying the human race. Now, officials admit decontamination only reducing the external exposures, not internal exposures. And inhaling radioactive particles increase radiation exposure by a factor of a trillion. Now, this is true for insects and mammals and animals and birds too. It's not just humans. So when you see inhaling particles increases radiation exposure by a factor of a trillion, it's easy to understand why there was 865,000 extra cases of cancer at the cancer centers in Japan. Cancer is just one of the 1,800 illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries will manifest and be diagnosed long before cancer. We may not be able to live in Japan someday because of radioactive fallout. And so you have six in 10 Fukushima children with diabetes from the radioactive fallout. So if you are bringing nuclear dumps to Labrador, you have to repackage it, and you're gonna be hemorrhaging this stuff into the environment. And eventually it melts down, and you lose North America, uh, certainly the East Coast immediately. Congenital heart disease operations rose 14% in children, neonates and infants. So for every 100,000 children in Japan, you need 14,000 open heart surgeries because the radiation aggregates in their hearts and mutates and as their... These are neonates and infants we're talking about. Per 100,000, 14,000 open heart surgeries in other words, heart problems surged after Fukushima. Fukushima is the most serious man-made disaster in human history. Obesity rates are doubled, Japan's average, and excessive weight gain after a nuclear crisis is a marker of radiation brain damage from radiation aggregating in your head. And that's gonna be true for Canada and the United States, North America, Europe, Pneumonia cases surge in Japan, also all over North America after, in the following year, right? And you've seen this after Chernobyl. We're almost through these headlines. We'll jump into it. Japan Times column, as the public, possibly worldwide, worldwide, sickens over time, the truth will come out about Fukushima. So it will make the whole world sick. This is a model from France. And again, France will come up quite a bit in this story tonight. It covers all the Pacific, all the continents, all of the oceans with radioactive fallout. It's absurd. This is absurd. Nuclear has zero rights to exist. 
And people that proliferate nuclear should be held accountable. Here's the former incredibly intelligent Prime Minister of Canada. Well, he's not really a Prime... He, that's the position that he had, but he wasn't an actual Prime Minister. He was a, a sleeper cell for a major corporation I'll show you coming up. This is him grabbing a protester by the throat, and then he threw him down on the ground. And here he's making fun of what he'd done over there, right? Lots of memes about Kretchen, but people don't understand how actually smart this person is. You will by the time you watch this. Former Prime Minister Jean Kretchen is part of a secretive project. Very secretive. They didn't want anybody to know what they were up to, according to the emails. We can't let this leak out, was their actual words. To store nuclear waste in Labrador, which is Newfoundland, several hundred miles away from where I'm currently too. Here's what he was said of, saying about it. This is a very complicated story, so please bear with me. But here in the correspondence we have obtained, the plan is to dig a hole in Labrador yes, to put you know, the foreign, problem, no, the, foreign he, he, spent nuclear fuel. Yeah, we, we sold, you know, we sold uranium. We did. So we have a responsibility. We made money selling uranium. So we should help, you know, to, uh, to solve the problem that the countries who bought our uranium are facing with that. We have some responsibility, I believe. And if we can help, we should. Okay, so first off, we've got a while before we get to that story. So we sold the uranium, is this true? And Japan used it for 18 months in their fuel cycle. And now what? We're supposed to take it back and store it for a billion years. <laughs> so we shouldn't, we definitely shouldn't produce any more uranium ever because there's people out there who will leverage that and destroy our country and our planet. That's actually destroying our planet. So should we, should we send all the cars back to China that we got from China when we're finished with them? Should we send back uh, toxins when we're finished with it to other countries when we buy it? You know what I'm saying, right? Should we, do, you know, like that, That what he's claiming is applies to everything. It applies to everything. So when we buy food from another country, should we send the packaging back to the country that produced it? Um, it's a very, very naughty person. So let's try to understand who John Kretchen is. This is got to do this in order to tell this story tonight. He's allegedly a, a Canadian politician. It's much more darker than that. Who served as the 20th Prime Minister of Canada from 1993... In 1993 was a really important year for France and a horrific year for Canada, as you'll see coming up. And he served from 1993 to 2003, but he was actually a politician since 1963. So 19, he spent over 30 years as a politician. Here he is as a young man with uh, Trudeau, another prime minister, former prime minister. Now, he was also the finance minister of Canada for many years and justice minister in Canada for many years. He served in various cabinet posts under Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, and that's Trudeau to his left here. And remember, uh, Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones had an affair with Prime Minister Trudeau's wife, right? Most prominently as a Minister of Justice, a Minister of Finance, a Minister of Indian Affairs, and the Northern Developments. He also served as the Second Deputy Prime Minister of Canada, Secretary of State for External Affairs, and John Turner's short-lived government. So unbelievably connected, unimaginably knowledgeable of all the inner workings here in Canada. 
and he became leader of the Liberal Party of Canada in 1990. This wasn't an accident, he, as you'll see coming up. Uh, serving as a leader of opposition before leading the party to a majority government in 1993 federal elections, he was re-elected with a further majority in 1997 and 2000. He was strongly opposed to Quebec's sovereignty movement. Here in Canada, we have a French part of Canada. It's 25% of Canada, uh, known as Quebec. Now, you might know it as Montreal, but that's just the capital. The province is Quebec. It's 25% of the population of Canada is French-speaking. They're not recognized in France, though. Uh, he became subject to various pol uh, political controversies in later years of his premiership, and he was accused of inappropriate behavior in the sponsorship scandal. These are distractions for the big picture. He resigned as prime minister in December 2003. Resigned because he'd done what he was supposed to do which is typical. Paul Martin done the same thing, and he'll come up in a bit. At age 87, he is the oldest living former Canadian prime minister. And here you see him to the far right, very young, in 1967. This is four years after he started working for the government with the Lester B. Pearson. So... He's extremely connected. <clears throat> By 1995, the annual deficit, because he was Minister of Finance, uh, had reached extreme levels here in Canada, the deficit, $37 billion, And as a result of persistent deficit financing, the federal government's total debt uh, shot up to $588 billion in 1996. And it was annually, it was costing $42 billion to maintain that debt, which was 26% of the annual federal budget, basically robbed Canada for the globalists. As you'll see, this shocking story tonight. In 1997, Prime Minister Trudeau appointed Chrétien Trudeau Appointed Kretchen as Minister of Finance in 77. And then in the Pearson Cabinet in 65, he was Secretary to the Minister of Finance. In 67, Kretchen was the Minister of State for the Department of Finance and the Minister of National Revenue in 1968. That right kept going all the way into the 70s and 80s. He returned to federal politics and ran for, successfully ran for leadership of the party, the Liberals, 1993 general election. He won a majority government, which was, there was no opposition. This was designed by the globalists, as you'll see. Kretchen became the 20th Prime Minister of Canada, and he held the post for 10 years until he accomplished what the corporations needed, and then he walked away. <clears throat> Okay, and so they also got it, um, services across Canada, which is what the taxpayers were paying. We're paying taxes for the services. He gutted all that in order to further destroy Canada. Here we go. <clears throat> now, he wrote a book, Straight from the Heart, and they had a daughter, France, was mentioned briefly. And they had a son, Hubert, and an adopted son, uh, Mitchell, were not mentioned at all. So the daughter, France, Chrétien, uh, I forget how to pronounce that, huh? Demaris? Demaris? I can't remember. Yeah. Something like that. And this is her there. Now, she married um, Andre Demaris, the president of Montreal-based Power Corporation of Canada and the son of Paul Demaris Sr. Now, 
Power Corporation of Canada, they got stakes in nuclear heavily. And uh, they're a worldwide, but France, typically they're a French, French company. And son of Paul, a wealthy businessman, wealthy is, uh, he's the fourth wealthiest, wealthiest person in Canada, by the way. The French connection, who's who of the Canuck politics, the Canadian politics. So Jean Cretchen's daughter is married to the son of Paul, Andres, and he is the largest shareholder and director of Tolfina Elf, the largest corporation in France. The largest corporation in France. That's important because that we're going to cover part of France. We actually have uh, two little tiny islands not very far from me that is actually France. Even though France is on the other side of the Atlantic, we have two islands that are the sovereign nation of France. I'll show you that on the chart coming up. Paul Demaris Seniors was a Canadian financier based in Montreal with an estimated family worth of $4.5 billion as the fourth wealthiest person in Canada, 235th in the world, and he's chairman, chief executive officer of Power Corporation. They have half a trillion dollars in holding that they manage. She had one daughter, Jacqueline. Jacqueline married Prince Hadid, the direct descendant Uh, the direct descendant of Anne Emmanuel Fernande Francois de Croix. So, uh, a historically important person from France. So, you can see the lineage now how George, Jean Chrétien, daughter, might have married a, the son of a multi billionaire and an active management of that. She's a lawyer herself. She was also managed to get herself the Order of Canada, is a Canadian national order and the second highest honor for merit in the systems of order, decorations, medals of Canada, and the Order of Merit. And Power Corp International Advisory Board, which is what her husband manages, has uh, featured individuals such as former German chancellors uh, ministers of Saudi Arabia, heads of the U.S. Federal Reserve have worked for this company, all, rather. All of these people work for Power Corp International. And uh, Prime Minister Canadian Pierre Trudeau also worked for Power Corp. Or, uh, let me come up with the proper name here. I get lost sometimes because there's so much going on, right? Power Corporation of Canada, I believe, was the name of that company. I lost track of it now. We'll get there. Yeah, it's always confusing, isn't it? Yeah, Power Corporation of Canada, that's important. So, they had incredible amount of former prime ministers here in Canada have worked for the Power Corporation of Canada. The former Premier of Ontario, Bill Davis and John uh, Robarts, and progressive conservatives have both set, sat on the Power Corporation of Canada's National Advisory Board. The former Premier of Quebec, Daniel Johnson Jr. worked for Power Corporation from 1973 to 81, and in the last three years of his term was vice president of the company. Paul Martin Jr. Uh, served as the 21st Prime Minister of Canada and worked for Power Corporation of Canada. Martin succeeded John Cretchen as the leader. So when Cretchen stepped down, Paul Martin stepped in, right, uh, of the Liberal Party and became Prime Minister on December the 12th, 2003. 
who Gene Kretschmer talking about, right? Okay, so the French connection, who's who of the connect politics? Now, John Kretschmer, if you go back and look at John Kretschmer, there was, he worked for Power Corporation of Canada, which was a French, the biggest company in France owns it, manages it, but it's like, this is all backdoor stuff, right? Now, St. Pierre Mechelon dispute. This is an important facet of the story for John Kretchen because he orchestrated this and stepped in and sealed the deal. He became prime minister on the piggybacking in on this one right here. So St. Pierre Mechelon is a tiny little island just a couple of miles long, but it's owned by France and it's right off the coast of Canada, just 30 kilometers off the coastline. Now, I used to go out there because I grew up in Francois. We still have no automobiles there. And we used to go out there and get cigarettes and alcohol for weddings and parties and stuff like that from France. It still exists today. So there was France. Now, the biggest corporation of France had a lot to gain from what happened next. Canada had declared a 12 nautical mile territorial limit in the 1970s. France followed suit in 1971. It meant that the territorial sea claims overlapped the Buren Peninsula of Newfoundland, fishing rights and mineral rights, right? So there was an agreement was reached in 1972. In 1977, um, Canada claimed a 200 mile limit continental shelf. So our continental shelf went out 200 miles in Newfoundland in Canada. <clears throat> and so along come John Kretchen. And so this was set up in his first run. He stepped down and then he became the prime minister in 1993. Uh, but he was there for this whole setup. So Canada and France reached an agreement in 1998 to adjudicate the boundaries, and a quarter century dispute was resolved in 1992 by an international court of arbitrations, which is lawyers, right? Jean Kretchen is a lawyer. And according to the decision, France received an economic zone with a 24 mile limit off St. Pierre Mechelon, but they also received a 10.5 mile wide corridor that ran all the way out to the edge of the continental shelf. This was Gene Kretchen came in and sealed the deal. Now that's important because the 200 mile limit that ran off the east coast of Canada and ran towards France, France, that 200 mile corridor now was France. It was 10 miles, 10 and a half miles wide, but it cut off the continental shelf. So the migratory fish that traveled along the continental shelf had to go through the 10.5 mile by 200 mile corridor. So France owned that strip and you couldn't have the migratory, the mass migratory species of marine life going under migratory run without passing through a 200 mile corridor that also extended all the way on the other side, almost to the coastline. So what they done was they brought in international fleets of Japanese and European countries, and they trolled that 10 mile by 200 mile strip 24 seven. And so the fish, the migratory fish, didn't come out the other side of the strip. They basically killed that ocean, that part of the ocean, by doing this. And there was, over a short period of time, they destroyed the entire um, migratory route. <clears throat> Thanks to Gene Kretchen. Former Prime Minister of Canada, Paul Martin, was hired in 1960 to work for Paul Damascus Sr. by Maurice Strong, who ended up, um, he wrote the Kyoto Protocol, right? 
and in 91 sold the company to Martin, the Canadian steamship lines, and Martin went on to make his personal fortunes as an owner of the Canadian Steamship Limited. <coughs> but he, Paul Martin worked for Power Corporation of Canada. Former Prime Minister of Canada, Gene Critchen, also sat on the board of Power Corporations, subsidiary consolidated uh, in 1980s before he became the leader of the Liberal parties. Even though, right, he was in politics since 1963. His daughter, France, France, because he couldn't stand being Quebecer, he always wanted to be French, see, is married to the son of Paul Demiris, Andre, and Cretchen's longtime aide, chief policy advisor, uh, Eddie Goldberg, also worked in the past for Power Corporation. So did John, which is John Ray. He was a strategist, strategist for Cretchen and served as Power Corp's executive vice president. And he is the brother of the former interim Liberal Party of Canada leader, Bob Ray, and former Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Trudeau, who served in the mid-1990s in Power Corporation's International Advisory Board. Trudeau's assistant, Ted Johnson, also worked for Power Corp during the Trudeau administration. And I showed you pictures earlier of uh, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau and John Cretchen when they were young, right? And then... He had a daughter, his first daughter, he named her France, France Christian, right? Wow. And so what you're seeing was, you're seeing Power Corporation of Canada, which is a French company, destroying Canada. Okay, <clears throat> and son of Paul, a wealthy businessman. Now, Paul Martin became prime minister temporarily. He created a law so he can get his money out of Canada without paying taxes. And he moved the shipping business to the Philippines where he hired welders and pipe fitters and steel uh, workers for 27 cents an hour. And then they built ships for the Canadian military and Coast Guard that uh, the unions here couldn't compete with. So all the shipyards in Canada end up closing because they couldn't compete with former Prime Minister Paul Martin. Once he changed the law to get his money out of the country and get the contracts, he stepped down, just like Cretchen had stepped down. This was all for Power Corporation. This was a kickback for destroying Canada, basically. And Paul Martin succeeded John Cretchen as the leader of the Liberal parties and became Prime Minister December 12, 2003, when Cretchen stepped down, right? So in 1960s, he worked for Paul Damaris, Sr., the French Connection, by, uh, he was hired by Mr. Strong, uh, Marie Strong, is the Liberal backroom operator, tycoon, part-time United Nation official who authored the Kyoto Accord, much like the current Paris Accord, right? It's an international treaty which extends the 1992 United Nation, which George Bush Sr. described as the New World Order, which is United Nations. Uh, and this is just, this is the globalist takeover of the planet. They don't have sovereignty of any country, but currently everybody does whatever they tell them. If they're, and they, they call it recommending, right? Everybody does whatever United Nations recommends. We don't have sovereignty anymore. Somehow or another, they managed to take that away. <coughs> We're getting there. So Mr. Demaris made Mr. Martin president of Canadian Steamship Lines and in 1981 made him spectacularly rich by selling the company to him and a partner for $180 million. Martin Shipping Company is estimated to be worth in 2003, $424 million, which was the 63rd richest person in Canada. Obviously, he's much more wealthier than that now after being prime minister and getting these shipping, lucrative shipping contracts. What does this mean in terms of allegiance 
her loyalty to Mr. Demiris and his empire in Canada and France. Martin gives his company three sons in order to get rid of conflict of interest when he was prime minister. Uh, but he, sh he never fully revealed how he became so wealthy, but now we know, right? I showed you. That there is no liberal leadership, but a sham designed to give the appearance of democracy in Canada. Again, then the liberals granted a direct-to-home satellite license to a company run by Cretchen, Jean Cretchen's son-in-law, Andre Demiris, the son of Paul Demiris, the globalist, who helped destroy Canada. And, and like, so greedy, they got so much, but they, they're not happy with that. They got so much money, so much influence, that for a bit of fun, they just destroyed Canada's futures and everybody else's. Not, they're just incredibly greedy people. You can give them a trillion dollars, they're not going to be happy. They'll figure out ways now, oh, I can take that and destroy this country and destroy that country. It's some kind of weird sickness. And remember, the 10.5 mile wide corridor ran 200 miles out. France brought in international fleets. We lived right there. I grew up right there. And we couldn't get any fish after this because the international fleet was raking it right by this... Gene Cretchen, a proof is a proof. He's not stupid, he's not naive, and he's not gullible. Okay, so here we go. Former Prime Minister Cretchen. Now this is why all of that is important. Because this story downplays what's really going on. Cretchen says, well, I'm just a lawyer. That's what he says in, when he's doing the interview. Uh, I'm not a politician anymore, I'm just a lawyer. But no, no, no. Look at look at the connection through his family. Look at the people that and the people that he was surrounded with and connected to, and how he got his fortunes, who his daughter is married to, how he named his daughter France, and that uh, power corporation of Canada is heavily involved in nuclear. Is not an accident. Former Prime Minister Cretchen is part of a secretive project to store nuclear waste in Labrador. Email shows. Cretchen defends the project, saying Canada, as a supplier, has a responsibility to dispose of it. Well, Canada is not the supplier, a corporation is. Right? Canada, Canada is, not, is not the producer of the uranium, it's the corporation. So let's arrest the corporation and, destroy, and sell you know, liquidate the corporation and sell their assets and uh, pay restitutions to Canadians. In an interview with uh, Radio Canada, former Prime Minister of Defence and Project Store Nuclear Waste in Labrador, Canada, saying Canada has been a top seller of uranium. Now, first off, as borders closed and lockdowns hit last spring, a group of entrepreneurs, this is how they describe the secret cabal, a group of entrepreneurs and lawyers had something else on their mind, setting up a facility in Labrador for international nuclear waste. International nuclear waste. International nuclear waste. Plan, uh, they had a meeting in April 2020 with partners in Japan. Partners in Japan. This is absurd. The whole story is absurd. And the meeting was to bring together former U.S. government nuclear advisor Fraser, Montreal business executive, Montreal business, Quebec business executive, Albert Babushi, as well as influential figures in Japan's nuclear and public relation industries. Public relation industries. These are, uh, this is sedition what we're talking about. Emails drafted in 2019-2020 obtained by Radio Canada investigative program revealed they were going to discuss a secretive project to bury nuclear waste from foreign countries in Labrador, specifically Japan. Former Prime Minister Jean Cretchen 
was a player in the initiative. Because he's, as I showed you, he's unbelievably connected, unimaginably connected, unbelievably clever. Another backer of the plan highlighted Kretchen's ties to the current Liberal government and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And Kretchen has acted as counsel for the project's promoters who are clients of his law firm, Denton. 87 years old and refuses to stop being evil, even at this age. And he's got so much money, he can buy in Newfoundland probably. In a letter Kretchen wrote in summer 2019, to executive at a major Japanese public relation agency that he argued in favor of storing other countries' nuclear waste in Canada and said he will help move the project forward, just like he'd done with the French getting a 200-mile corridor all the way out to the continental shelf. What an incredible betrayal that was. And there's links below. You can listen to the interview, but that you got to take what I'm showing you into consideration. That the former Prime Minister, Jean Chrétien, said Canada had a responsibility. No, first off, he doesn't know anything, allegedly don't know anything about nuclear. He says that it's carbon-free and it doesn't have any emissions. Of course, this is nonsense. This is absolute nonsense. This is the globalist narrative since 2018, the new narrative. To help clean up nuclear waste because it made money selling uranium used to produce nuclear energy. So right off the bat, then nuclear energy is not carbon free. It's, it's impossible to ever call nuclear carbon free again. We have some responsibilities, he said, he believed, which is not what he's doing. See, he's setting a stage. Now he's trying to, CBC wasn't investigating, they were covering up. And if we can help, we should, he said in an interview with Radio Canada. But CBC, as I'll show you with the next story, decided to come out and try to, to bury the significance of it. Canada's been a top supplier, and I've always thought that it is, I have always thought, that, which is simply not true, by the way, that it's only proper that Canada should ultimately become the steward and garreteur of the safe storage of spent nuclear fuel after its first duty cycle, Kretchen had wrote. This is... Um, such a this is a really complicated subject, right? Nuclear fuel and storage and stuff like that. And so for him to even suggest that he was deeply had deep thoughts about this and somehow he said, Well arrange to participate in discussions in Canada, its provinces and potential partner countries to move the concept of a deep repository in northern Canada forward. Okay. So the problem with Deep geological repositories is a couple of things. So first off, if you just say they'd done something like this and everybody is sleeping and they got gets away with it, they have to repackage it all. At, right? First it's all vented, and then they gotta repackage it so it's a massive amount of radiation being released in Canada in Labrador. And this is a native uh, native communities where the time they're putting this, by the way, which has their own sovereignty here in Canada, basically 70,000 square kilometers of land. And so at some point it melts down. That's the problem with nuclear. You have to manage it. If you don't, it melts down. Putting it in a deep hole in the ground, which you're going to call a deep geological repository, is not a repository, it's a hole in the ground. And at some point, it could be two years or 10 years or 20 or 30, 40 years, but not 50, but somewhere less than 50 years, it melts down. And once it melts down, it starts burning at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. It, it'll burn right through granite or anything else. It hits water tables, that'll split the earth and you'll have geysers of steam coming up, a radioactive steam that will kill the planet eventually. But it will certainly destroy all of eastern Canada immediately, and it will make all the drinking water undrinkable in, in eastern Canada within a couple of years. You have to leave Atlantic Canada within a few years of that splitting the earth into China syndrome. 
Some nuclear experts who spoke after reviewing the email questioned the safety of such a project and raised concern about the lack of government involvement and the secrecy surrounding it. I must say I was really stunned that there was a small group of very high-profile uh, representatives who are all connected to Power Corporations of Canada, a French company, that was coming together to form a conspiracy, says Schneider, an international consultant, we covered him many times, whose expertise is sought after around the world and said this type of project should be led by governments, not industrialists. This is him there. We're not talking about building a grad somewhere, he says. He was stunned by the project's covert na uh, nature. We're talking about a highly complex project that no country in the world has so far successfully implemented and, you know, storing radioactive material. And he also takes issues with the group's explicit wishes to keep the plant covert, considering the dangers of substances involved. The group wants to bury the imported nuclear waste the waste facility in the native land in Labrador was put on hold by the pandemic, allegedly, and it's unclear what will happen next. And Barbushi, right, a Quebec businessman, a promoter of the project, said there is nothing to talk about. Now, why would he say that? There was obviously something to talk about. They're not going to waste their time doing nothing. Reacting to Radio Canada's report Thursday, Newfoundland Labrador Premier Andrew Fury who done the stencils on my sister, medical, and her husband a few years back, said Kretchen had mentioned the idea of storing nuclear waste in Labrador to him when he was running for the leader of the province liberals last year. Liberals, because this is what Kretchen was liberal, right? It was very brief. It was a suggestion of economic opportunities for nuclear waste and burying nuclear waste for the province. I said, that's not on, Furry had said. Now, of course... That's a really interesting statement. Said to his knowledge, no one in his government administration has any formal discussions on the nuclear waste storage, and that his view on it was there was zero possibility of it happening. That we're talking about Kretchen and these people like the Canadian Power Corporation of Canada, French, the biggest company in France. They don't care about what Furry says at all, they're, if they're going to do it, Furry can't stop them. Canadian Nuclear Waste Management Organization has for years tried to build, and Canadian Nuclear Waste Management Organization are the people that made the waste in, their, in the first place. Now, right, the monsters that created it are in charge of getting rid of it, and their solution is dig a hole, put it down there, and run away. That's not a solution. Like, the entire planet right now has been fighting for a solution, allegedly, for 75 years since Nagasaki, Hiroshima. And Canadian Nuclear Waste Management Organization is not an organization. It's the, the people that created it in the first place. It's the worst possible scenario. An email shows this project is different, focusing instead on working with other nations to store the waste starting with Japan. And something that hasn't been done before, according to Schneider, is storing this stuff, which, which it hasn't. And there's good reason. He said this is extremely radioactive material. From a few meters away, if spent fuel is not protected, it's a lethal dose to a human within a minute. Well, it's actually quicker than that when you're talking about, you know, that's one pound, but if you've got... A bundle of it, 1,800 pounds, it's lethal. Kretchen said in 2019, Gene Kretchen, former Prime Minister of Canada, in 2019 letter that the dry granite rock of Labrador would be ideal to build a deep geological repository. Switzerland got granite. Um, Finland got granite. The Sahara Desert, right, in Algeria, for instance. There's, you know, there's many things... This is not the first time we heard the word granite, but 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures will consume granite. It'll atomize it and aerosol it and ionize it and radiate it. And eventually, it'll, water, it'll touch water. Water expands 1,200 cubic feet per second per liter. And, and so that'll split the earth like we've seen in Japan, where there's six places 
around Japan's reactors where the Earth is split. The steam that's coming out of the ground is over 10 sievers per hour, but that's actually the maximum dose the Geiger counters can measure. And you have to abandon the site for extended periods because of the radioactive steam. If you try to go through it, it's a lethal dose immediately. That's what happened there was the China syndrome hit the water tables, the water expanded, split the earth, and now the steam is perpetually coming out of there probably forever and ever. And that drifts across uh, the oceans and around the planet delivering exceptional doses of uh, atoms exceptional amounts of atoms that's we're losing the planet that's i'll show you coming up uh, clark the university of ottawa professor which is a lapdog for the industry agrees that the region's geology makes it possible to find a good canada site if somebody wanted to embark on an economic venture to store nuclear waste from japan wow this is what i mean like universities have been captured by the industry a long time ago the island in Japan, on the other hand, is more prone to earthquakes and fracturing, making it not an ideal place to find a nuclear waste site, he said. He said, from the University of Ottawa. And Clark said what Ontario's learned is its search for deep geological repository sites, that if that, though that, is that if you don't include local governments and populations early on in the process, you're doomed for failure. If you don't trick and deceive and manipulate and coerce the local population, you're doomed for failure. Months after Kretchen's letter to Japanese public relations executives, uh, Koga's response in September illustrates the secretive nature of the discussions. Secretive nature. As the success of the project hinges on the cooperation, cooperation of all stakeholders, Upmost care needs to be taken to keep the information from leaking. That this is the Japanese public relations firm, Koga wrote, accepting Jean Kretchen's invitation for a meeting in Canada. So, Upmost care needs to be taken to keep the information from leaking. To keep the information from leaking. He said, I understand that I'm attending as a private person. Well... So this is 100% conspiracy. This is illegal. What we're talking about is illegal. So Kretchen should be arrested and so should Koga. Takokyu Hattori, who held senior positions at TEPCO, which is nationalized by the Japanese government because they went bankrupt after Fukushima. The company involved in the Fukushima nuclear accident is no longer a company. It's nationalized because they were on the stock market. It was also to be, right, because corporate personhood uh, rules today, right? It was also to be part of the trip according to the emails. So, like, the plot really thickens. And when Radio Canada reached out to Albert uh, Barbushi, the Quebec businessman, the entrepreneur from Quebec promoting the project, and to Kretcher, both appeared to minimize its importance as well as their involvement. In other words, both of them done all he could to hide the fact of it. At June 2020, email from Barabushi refers to a smooth transition after former Newfoundland and Labrador Premier Dwight Ball's resignation took effect in August. As you may already know, Premier Ball has announced that he will be stepping down. A new leader will be named on August the 3rd. That said, we plan to stay connected with Premier Ball so the transition is expected to be smooth. Barbushi wrote. See, this didn't get mothballed because of the COVID. This is still not going to, this is not mothballed at all. This is just them coming out trying to cover. They didn't want it exposed, so now they got a cover story and they own the media, they own the universities. Four years ago, Ball's chief of staff, Greg Mercer, was found to have failed to report his previous lobbying activities on time. And some of his lobbying involved a company at the heart of the group's nuclear storage project, Terra Vault, which we've covered many times over the years. Unbelievable. They're, they're trying to do it, see? And Fraser, the former U.S. nuclear advisor and another key player in the project, is one of Terra Vault's major shareholders. 
And Fraser is the former U.S. nuclear advisor, is a shareholder in Terra Vaults. Wow, that's kickback. And he refused to speak to Radio Canada. Mercer was found at the time to have been more than a late, a year late to clear in his lobbying activities with Terra Vault before working for Ball. Inside man, right? That's called a sleeper cell. Ball also said Thursday, Cretchen, John Cretchen mentioned the idea of a deep geological repository in Labrador to him. My response to him was swift to say, as the premier, my government is not interested in entering into any discussion with your client on this issue. No, this, this is people covering their bases. So I was consulted, but I don't know why they're at, what, where they're at. I don't even know there were Japanese. I didn't even know there was Japanese people involved in that. Kretchen said, oh, yeah, sure. Because, like, I already showed you how connected Kretchen actually is. Zero possibilities he didn't know. Zero. He 100% he is at the heart of this. Same as he was for the corridor off St. Pierre Mechelon. This was before Radio Canada called back last week informing him it had the letter he wrote to Koga in 2019. So they had a letter of known about it, but yet he said in the interview that he didn't know about it. And they said, well, we got a letter of you writing the public relations firm and setting up a meeting about the Japan's nuclear waste coming to North America. He then agreed to do a sit-down interview. So let's do that again. He said, I was consulted, but I didn't know where they're at. I didn't even know there was Japanese people involved in it, he said. And that was before they called back and said, hey, we got a letter that you wrote to the public relation uh, management known as Koga in Japan in 2019. Wow. That's 100% sedition. In the interview, Kretschmer defended the project, repeating his belief that Canada has a responsibility to store... Well, he can believe whatever he wants, but it's simply not true. And uh, just because of that statement, we should 100% unequivocally stop producing any uranium ever in this planet. It's outrageous that people like this even exist. And Kretchen maintained that he's simply acting out his duty as a lawyer. 87 years old. He's not a lawyer. He's the former prime minister of Canada, the former finance minister of Canada, the former justice minister of Canada. He's not just a lawyer. And agreed to sign the letter when asked by his colleagues. Again, right, this was a knee-jerk reaction on the telephone, basically. We made money selling uranium, he claims again, so we should help to solve the problem that the countries who brought our uranium are facing. Well, if they never melted down, will we still be doing that? Adding that he believes atomic energy is one of the solutions to combating climate change. This is absurd to suggest. Like, radioactive fallout is climate change. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here's, here's radioactive fallout from Japan. This is an invisible cloud. This is the Atlantic Ocean. Over there is the Pacific. That's America. Up there is Canada. That's Newfoundland, where I'm pointing to right now, where we're talking about Labrador, is up right there. It's That cloud is pulsing energy every second for a million years, heating up the planet. Nuclear is climate change. And then all the nuclear pools on the planet are creating clouds like this all the time. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, all the nuclear testing was producing clouds like this. And so it takes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years for a lot of that to get rained out and come down and land. It still pulses energy every second. Every facet of the story is insane. When uh, Denise asked whether his influence could open doors for the project, Kretchen said, no, I can't open the doors for you. It can get you out. Well, well like as I showed you earlier, John Kretchen is not just your average prime minister, you know. He's not just your average anybody. Like, his roots are deep. 
His fingers have been deep. He worked for the biggest corporation of France on top of that. So Fury, which this is uh, the zero possibility of nuclear waste stored in Labrador, says the Prime Minister, or the Premier of Newfoundland. Zero possibilities of nuclear waste in Labrador. There's no possibilities of government Newfoundland and Labrador approving a secretive project that would see the waste stored in Labrador, says Premier Andrew Fury. Emails drafted 2019-2020 obtained by Radio Canada's Esquique revealed a group of business executives, former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien, have been discussing a secretive project to bury nuclear waste from foreign countries in Labrador. And remember, Chrétien said he didn't even know Japan was involved, yet he had sent them a letter in 2019 to the public relations firm. And with Kretchen saying that, as a supplier of uranium, Canada has responsibility to safely dispose of it. Well, nobody can safely dispose of it. Canada never even tried. And right now we have the people producing it, all of a sudden now are in charge of it. The, the, the ultimate betrayal, by the way. However, Fury said it was mentioned during the discussion with Kretchen in 2020. So, f however, right, Fury said it was mentioned. So again, we're seeing the former uh, Premier of Newfoundland was contacted. The current Premier of Newfoundland was also con contacted. So this wasn't just somebody asking questions. This is somebody digging. So when Fury was running for leadership of the province uh, Liberals, he said it was a 15-minute discussion. Really. Fury said, in which Kretchen offered him advice on political life public service services and mentioned the project <laughs> it's much worse than that the plan is not on for newfoundland labrador fury says it was very brief it was suggesting economic opportunities for nuclear waste and burying nuclear waste for the province i said that's not on i don't have any knowledge about what happened before me so once again right not being forthcoming at all because he would have but I can tell you this, and tell the people of Newfoundland and Labrador, and frankly the people of the world, that plan is not on for Newfoundland and Labrador. That's an amazing statement. He said, I can tell you this, and the people of Newfoundland and Labrador, and frankly the people of the world. Why would you make a statement like that? It's because you understand what they're t actually talking about. You understand the significance of this. You're not going to get that in a 15-minute conversation. You're only going to get that in going down the rabbit hole with the players. In a statement Thursday afternoon, Ball confirmed he had a brief discussion in which Christian, Christian, John Christian, asked for his opinion on the project. My response was swift to say, as the premier of my government is not interested in entering any discussion with your clients on the issue and I have had no further discussion on the matter. So he released a statement after this story broke. Wow. So they're up, they're, they're at it, folks. And news of the secret of plan also came as a surprise from the Nuxavuk, and I butchered that name, I'm sure, government, for the native government in Labrador. And there have been previous discussions about nuclear storage in Labrador but said the level of secrecy of the latest story isn't a total shock. By the way, remember that the Americans actually stored nuclear weapons in Labrador. We only found out about it a few decades ago. They said unequivocally, there's no nuclear weapons in Labrador. Turns out there was nuclear weapons in Labrador. Four years ago, she noted Balls, this is the former premier of Newfoundland, Balls chief of staff, Greg Mercer, was found to have failed to report his lobbying activities. We already covered it, right? At the heart of the group's nuclear storage project, Terror Vault. So he was already lobbying for Terror Vault. Now, why would a Newfoundlander be a lobbyist for Terror Vault and not know about this project? Who is involved in the project? How does that actually work? It's ludicrous. We're almost through. There was so much secrecy back in 2017... 
So now, now we're now it's no longer 2019. Now we're talking about 2017. People couldn't find much detail. It was very secretive. Hush hush with ties to the provincial liberal parties. So now we're looking at 2017, not 2019-2020. And now it's being revealed again, and it's all very secretive. Now it's being revealed again. And so they can accomplish a lot in four years, folks. Make no mistake about it. There's no consultation with the people of Labrador, and it reminds us of the old colonialism style of government, which is... This is uh, the Canadian Power Corporation, or the Canadian... In response to the comments from Kretchen, that Canada has a responsibility to store waste from uranium for its produce, from the uranium it produced, uh, Thimble, Thimper, Trimper argued that the onus should always be on whichever region produced the product to find a safe storage for it. So what he's saying is, say, Saskatchewan produces it, Saskatchewan should... No, if someone buys it, it's yours, yeah? Should we return all the cars to foreign countries when we're finished with them? Like if we have... You know, if I paint my house with lead paint years ago, should I, when I remove that paint, should I box it up and send it back to the country that shipped it here? Should I send back packaging on, on products from other countries? In response to comments from Kretchen, of Canada's responsibility to store the waste from the uranium it produced, you know the answer. And the last one, if a jurisdiction had had an opportunity to gain economically through a provision of uranium or nuclear energy, I feel that that same jurisdiction really should be responsible for handling the waste it produced at that location. No. Not not at all. If you buy it, it's yours. Like you can't you don't have a repository anywhere on the planet. They're not even trying. They want this see it you have to vent it all the time into the environment for decades and decades and decades minimum. It's still split in the atom. Those atoms are still potent a million years from now. They're going to be up floating around looking for something they can destroy. So if it lands 50 feet away from me, a lot of this stuff can pulse and still damage me. That's the problem with it. And you need a four foot thick wall to protect you from it. And we're talking, you can put two million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see them. Just one of those atoms can cause all kinds of illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries like a single atom. It sequesters in your muscles, your organs, your bones. You can have heart problems, liver problems, lung problems, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline. You end up with Alzheimer's and dementia and autism, Down syndrome, diabetes. And there's 1,800 illnesses that can manifest. So... Kretchen is nobody's fool. You might see pictures like this. This is a mockery of who he actually really is. But it does show you how, how arrogant he is that he would do this to somebody. He was actually charged by the criminal justice system. Obviously, he beat it. And here is he's mocking it. Let me remind you about Fukushima radioactive fallout. Deteriorating plant threatens mass extinction around the world. Like, what kind of headline is that? A nuclear power plant breaks down, catches fire, the emissions are floating around the world. And here's a model of what that might look like. The emissions are floating around the world. They threaten mass extinction around the world. Okay, so I covered thousands of headlines of die-offs. So I launched expeditions. This is Vancouver, Canada. And all the way up to British, up to Alaska, that's Vancouver Island. The arrows you're seeing is representatives of where I might have spent three, four, five days surveying, doing species counts. We've done this for six years, doing species counts, four to five months a year, up that coastline. 
for four to five months a year, I went out on the ocean for six years doing species counts. And you can see I approached this many, many ways. Hopefully we got it on high quality. It was looking like it was on high quality. It's hard to wrap your mind around because awesome. you've seen these little tidbits, right? They don't really... But ultimately, this is what I discovered. The species to your left were eradicated by the radioactive fallout from Japan. So all the species seen to the left, you'll never see them again. Fukushima, radioactive fallout, actually killed all those species to your left. They're all gone permanently. I know because I went back and forth for six years doing species counts four to five months a year on the ocean. Hey Zoe, <laughs> a little this too is, rough out this there. This is some of it. And a few waves right Just here. Try to give you context, right? It's hard to wrap your mind around. It's hard to wrap your mind around what I'm trying to say to you, but. Fukushima is an extinction event, I know, because I went out and done the species counts for six years. John Cretchen didn't do it. Power Corporation of Canada didn't do it. But I went out there and done the species counts. Last year we went out and we went across the province for 700 kilometers, and the species were all missing. There was no fish in the lakes. I checked 400 lakes, there's no fish in the lakes. Um, there was only two birds and 400 ponds. This is because of Fukushima's killed most of the species off. In the forest, there was no insects in the forest whatsoever. There was no spider webs anywhere to be found. I only found two wasps and one bee out in mother nature itself. Wrap your mind around that for 700 kilometers. And then this operation broke down and we sent the motor back to the factory because it was basically brand new, had a warranty. We sent it back to Ontario. And they basically said it's been sabotaged. Now currently... Ooh. Currently I'm doing species plants down here. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably just a built. Turned out to I'll be a clutch, figure. right? That that turned out to be a clutch. And uh, I broke down. I went and picked it up, right? Um, Back to a guy who does it. And so we He's we re we replaced the clutch a couple of weeks ago. But anyway. And uh, the primary clutch and the secondary clutch and the belt. Brutal. 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 Okay, so I'm, I'm doing all kinds of species counts, and what I'm finding is an extinction event is what I'm trying to show you. This is Ernie Gunderson. I hired employees that could only stay on the job for three minutes before they exceeded their... Per now, three-minute dose, he's talking about his three-mile island. These are lethal doses. When you can only go to work around nuclear for three minutes and you exceed your dose... There is no personal dose around man. There's personal. There is no such thing as a personal dose. This is a fabrication, right, of United Nations and Tom, International Atomic Energy Agency. Those people would have died within a few weeks. Arnie Gunderson said, "Move south of the equator if Japan's Unit Four fuel pool goes dry." Well, there's Reactor Four, and the fuel pool is where Arnie. I got Arnie put. Where my finger is pointing out, that's actually the fuel pool. So in comparison to the building over there, which is a model of this one here, Reactor 4 fuel pool doesn't exist. The division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. And so he made the assemblies for the pools at the top of the building, and the top don't exist, but Arnie doesn't understand that this is reactor four before they put the cover on it. That's what it actually still looks like today. They put a cover on it, and Arnie pretends that the fuel pools are at the top of it. And 
Ernie pretends that they actually look like this. This is just one of many media pretending they're at the fuel pool 100 feet above the deck to your left. We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake in 2011, leading to the country's worst nuclear disaster. Gunnison, move south of the equator, abandon North America if Reactor 4 fuel pool goes dry. Well, it went dry as I showed you. And as you can see, you should abandon all of North America, including Newfoundland and Labrador. So here's the numbers from studies. A million becquels a square meter over the West Coast. There was another study showing 20 million atoms of iodine-131 per liter of rainwater fall out. This is what Arnie Gunnarsson was talking about. There was another study showing 220 million atoms per liter of iodine-129 in the rain after Fukushima. And the last clip is um, David Suzuki, who's going to tell you the same thing that Arnie Gunnarsson told you, was bye-bye... Japan and should evacuate the coastline of North America. In other words, move south of the equator. So he says, Fukushima's most terrifying situation, you can imagine that if a single building melts down, it's bye-bye Japan, should evacuate the coastline of North America. Imagine taking that same fuel from hundreds of these buildings, not one, but hundreds, and putting them in Labrador. Three out of the four I'm going to start that again. Were destroyed in the three out of the four plants were destroyed in the in the earthquake and in the tsunami. The fourth one has been so badly damaged that the fear is if there's another earthquake of a seven or above that that building will go and then all hell breaks loose. I have seen a paper which says that if, in fact, the fourth plant goes under an earthquake and those rods are exposed, it's bye-bye Japan and everybody on the west coast of North America should evacuate. Now, if that isn't terrifying, I don't know why. Fukushima is the most terrifying situation I can imagine. Yeah, well... So is Gene Critchin. So I know this, this is a strange show for people. It's hard to wrap their minds around it. It really is, right? And it's hard to do it justice, such a complicated subject, right? But I still got to try to tell the story. But it is so complicated, so hard for the average person to wrap their mind around. But still, it's a story that nobody else is going to tell properly. And everything I'm showing you here tonight is the bigger picture. And the fact that Kretchen was saying that he had no idea Japan was involved and they had the emails showing in 2019, it's stunning. It's just heartbreaking how much damage has been done to this planet. Now, so John Kretchen's daughter is married uh, the people that are managing half a trillion dollars have personal wealth in the billions. And I raised... I'm, try, I'm the good guy trying to do something good. And I raised... Uh, donations coming in from James Lucid in the comments section there earlier of $61. Thank you, James. Bless you, man. And Tim N. donated $16. And Connie N. donated $25. So it's hard like to do the research. It's hard to do what we're trying to do as it is. And I have to struggle for every piece of equipment. It takes forever to do anything. And you always got to make tough decisions. And sometimes it seems hopeless, yeah? to you folks, I'm sure, but I never give up. I just keep 
working hard and we slowly build the operation in increments piece by piece by piece. And so it's a dismal amount of money that we raised, but it's better than not raising nothing by fur and it's awesome we raised something. And if we didn't, imagine how bad we'd be into. Still, it's um, demoralizing not to have the equipment, right? To do the work. It's taken me so many years just to get this operation up and running. It's a big operation that I got here because you got to do the research. Because they're not going to do it. As I showed you tonight, these people are not going to do the work, right? It's just heartbreaking for me anyway. I work so hard and uh, end up with maybe 60 people on my show if I'm lucky. I got 65 thumbs up, which is dismal, yeah? I got practically no views on my video tonight you watch. <laughs> I work like a dog all weekend. I got the next two shows are ready to go on nuclear news and Fukushima nuclear meltdowns. And um, we barely got an audience, right? I'm censored so heavily nobody even knows I exist. It'll take me probably 20 hours to get 400 views on this, if I'm lucky, because I'm censored, right? It'll take me at least a week or two weeks to raise enough money to cover the expenses from this week, which was over $425. We made back 100 And we're losing all the species. All of them. And then we have this incredible, disgusting cult trying to bury, send Japan's nuclear waste to the other side of Canada, to, to Labrador, and put it in native territory in a sovereign country, uh, an independent place in Canada, much like St. Pierre Macalana showed you earlier. See, we lost all the species on the West Coast. Now we're losing all the species on the East Coast. And all these people that I showed you tonight are trying to do is murder whatever's left. That's their intentions. That's their whole legacy. They have, they have, no, they have no emotions whatsoever. They're completely switched off. Like they're, they're greedy at a whole different level. They're, they're dangerous, even to themselves and to their loved ones. They're a threat to themselves and their loved ones. I went out and showed an extinction event, and we got 60 people on the show. It's bizarre, eh? I work like a dog, because I'm honest. I can barely keep the operation afloat, let alone move it forward and they get billions of dollars thrown at everything they want to do, whether it succeeds or not. I got the best audience in the world, yeah. No, I do, it's just a tiny audience, but we need the world to know these facts too, right? God bless everybody, hugs for everybody. Rob Rees, uh, Dana Nasana, hi Dana. Most uncomfortable news in the world. Yeah, it is so. Raymond. Patrick. Thinker. Warren. I am human. John 2. And hi, John. John Schiffet also. Dale P. Serge. Uh, Ayers, Steve White, let me come in and say goodnight to a few people. Because I've worked like a dog, like a dog to do this show. It's such a complicated show. And Jeff Lunt, but it's, it might matter eventually. If you don't tell the story, then the story can never be told, right? And so we have to do certain shows like this where you have to, it's painful, I know, for people, but you have to tell the story. 
Timo, uh, anybody I miss my apologies. I'm just cruising up through the names. I'll come back to the most recent comments in a few moments. Just a quick shout out to anybody I can find in the comment sections. Hugs for everybody at home watching this tonight, tomorrow, or later. Barks and meows. Um, let me see who else. Kevin Blanche. Hi, Kevin. Misty Cat. Evelyn. Evelyn uh, Nightshell. Hi. And if I miss anybody, it's because I'm just scrolling through. We're calling it a night now. And just uh, a little shout out for the few people around. Gives me a minute to wind down, right? I probably got everybody up high in the comments. I'll come back down to the most recent. Standing foot to the most recent comments. Millie's out there somewhere, I'm sure. Magic Mushrooms is out there. Blue Star Warrior. Hi, Blue Star. One good thing I noticed about all you people, you're exceptional people. You got to realize I'm, I'm a hard person. I, the stuff I do is not easy and it's not a game. I'm not here to please people. I'm here to tell the story. But I appreciate everybody. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Sheffer. I appreciate everybody, but I still, I have to be neutral, right? Tell this story constantly, to do the work constantly. Did I get everybody up top? Daniel, I think so. And Provoke, Calvin, Daniel, let me come down to the most recent. Yeah, it's a hard fight, Kevin, yeah. Lady J Homestead. Chandra Churchill. Thank you. James Lucid, hugs for you, my friend. God bless you. Means a lot. Hi, Millie. I was right, Millie was there somewhere. Sitting back, relaxing. Thank goodness. And Raymond. Okay, we got through it all. And so tonight, my apologies, it's a weird show, I know, but the, inf the whole cycle of what I showed is super important to anybody that's trying to pre understand the big picture. And I can guarantee you nobody's going to tell the story and include the documentation that I got here tonight. Nobody. Because, like, I was aware of what John Cretchen was up to when I was a kid, because my dad was. And, uh, unfortunately, he died in the late 80s. But uh, he was well known. He used to go the way to Ottawa and negotiate prices for the fisheries. And he would come back, and he would always say the same thing. We'd go back out on the ocean, and he'd say, they're, they're going to rob us. They're going to destroy us. John Cretchen is giving away... To, it's going to give away the land to France. France is going to have a corridor out to the 200 mile limit. How, how the hell could dad know about that, see, in the early 80s? Because they were planning it long before they'd done it, obviously, right? Uh, Maniac. God bless everybody. Hugs for everybody. So we got a... Uh, Huge amount of nuclear news gathered up the last couple of days, too. And I know the weekend is supposed to be a holiday, but we can't, we're not entitled to take holidays around here. There's links. Yeah, that's Beethoven, that's right. Well, Beethoven is the 
Classical music is recorded in the proper frequency, right? They changed the frequency of the mu of music in the 40s, but the original frequency of music was uh, 432, I think it was, which resonates perfectly with your body's harmony. But the 440 tuning that they use now for instruments, but um, that's like a marching, it's a very agitated frequency. And so classical music still uses the 432 frequency, which is the proper frequency. It's a melodic frequency that's soothing, whereas the other one's like a very agitated, uh, the 440. But you can buy equipment to change it over. And so there, there is links below uh, this video at the bottom of the description to donate. And if people don't donate, it's impossible to move forward. And we're so far in the hole, it looks like it might never get out of it, but we eventually will, I'm sure, because I won't give up, right? But to think about how much money the industry got to attack me and to, and to do the things they're doing, but I have so little to fight back with. It's simply not fair, right? I don't have any foundations to, to support me or Kevin Blanche. There's no organization supporting me or Kevin Blanche, for instance. You know what I'm saying, right? We got to, the struggle is real and we can do, we can change the world for the better. We're just never going to get the opportunity. You have to ask. So I always ask and uh, it's not a very nice thing to have to do. Okay. God bless everybody. Hooks for everybody. We'll see everybody hopefully tomorrow night. All 60 of you. I got 78 thumbs up out of it. That's actually amazing. It's just there should be 30,000 people on these shows. This is the conversation everybody should have. Because... Without the conversation, there's no future for anybody, including them. Good night, everybody. God bless. See everybody tomorrow night. Have a wonderful night, folks. Take care.